me today. I am Janie McNabb. I'm the CEO of Networks Northwest. And as your lunch sponsor, I'd like to just share a little bit of information about our organization. We are the regional headquarters for talent, business, and community development for the 10 counties of Northwestern Lower Michigan. That means we offer several programs and services, many of which you'll recognize. Uh, Michigan Works, Northwest Michigan Works is one of them. And under that banner, we offer our business resource network, uh, jobs for Michigan's graduates, um, the Going Pro Talent Fund. How many of you have access to Going Pro Talent Fund? Funds, grants, great, thank you. Um, and then in business development, we offer, we have a local host for the Apex Accelerator, Global Trade Alliance. Um, and then in our community development services, we do economic development planning, planning services for local governments, and larger scale topics that all of you are affected by, like housing, transportation, childcare, etc. So all of that uh, are things we do regularly. Uh, we partner with many of you in the room. But this sponsorship today is brought to you on behalf of the Collaborative Development Council, which is a group we convene consisting of all of the economic development organizations in the 10 counties, including Northern Lakes Economic Alliance, Traverse Connect, the Manistee Chamber, and Alliance for Economic Success. Uh, and we, at that table, come together to uh, share pra best practices, um, hear from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation about resources uh, and supports for our communities, uh, and we tackle a big project every year. Earlier, you heard about our outdoor uh, recreation economic impact report, which we did last year. This year, we're turning our attention towards clean energy and that kind of industry, what kind of impact that has on us. So it's important for you to know that uh, the people who care about the businesses in this region, who are there to support the businesses in this region, are getting together regularly to collaborate, to plan, and to innovate. And that's one of the reasons I really appreciated the topic today, uh, because Networks Northwest is all about fostering innovation, as a way to deal with the many challenges that we share and to be proactive and prepared for opportunities, um, open doors for all of our communities and our businesses and the people who live in our region. So I want to thank Peyton and the team for a great program today uh, and join them for an excellent lunch. And I will now introduce Carmelyn Smith, uh, Chair of the NLEA Board. Thank you. their meal. Um, certainly want to thank the team of Boyd Mountain. They take such good care of us every year. It's just a smooth operation. Great facility, just perfect for this size group of what we need. Great food, and of course, always great service. So please extend a hand to us. And uh, I don't think anybody's heard a word since Brian mentioned ice cream this morning. So I, uh, so I understand that ice cream and there's also a beautiful NLA 40th anniversary cake out there somewhere. I don't know how that all transpires, but uh, at some point that, that will all be in our future. So look forward to that. It is the NLA's 40th anniversary, so we need a cake, yeah. So thanks, that's a very cool thing. So um, I do work for Consumers Energy. It's my day job, but uh, today we're the hat of uh, chairperson of the uh, Northern Lakes Economic Alliance Board of Directors. Uh, real honored to serve in that capacity. This is my second year in, in that position. And as a board, uh, all of us really engaged in the NLA. They're really proud of today's symposium. Uh, we value this opportunity, A, to bring so many people together, but not only bringing us together, but they're people who know and understand economic development and like to engage in those conversations. So I think that's really valuable in having all of us in the room. There's, uh, some of you may, may even remember this phrase, Senator Jason Allen, uh, when he was our state senator, he used to say he's down in Lansing, <clears throat> people think of 
northern Michigan as uh, nothing but hicks and sticks north of M46. I don't know if you've heard that phrase or not. And um, with hearing Brian and Jake speak this morning, and then the conversation that took place in the breakout session from where I was, uh, on the one on housing, just symbolic of the business sophistication that we have up here in northern Michigan. And we really sell ourselves self short and really need to keep taking that message to Lansing and to others. So we are we are powerful. In reflecting on the 40th anniversary, I can remember uh, back in my old days when I was running the Petoskey Chamber, going to the annual meeting of the NLEA, and it was in the country club, the Charlotte Boy Country Club, I think. Tom Johnson was leading the or organization. There were a dozen of us, maybe 20, sitting around a room talking about the accomplishments and things going on with the NLEA. Then this uh, character named Andy Hayes came into the NLEA, and we it was marching bands, I don't know, pyrotechnics, flyovers, I don't know, football stadiums, I don't remember what all Andy brought to the mix here. Um, but we've, we've evolved to this format of being, um, uh, again, a chance to showcase the NLEA, but also to have a symposium-style environment where we can all learn together and share ideas together. And I really like how that evolution is taking place. So I think this is a great direction for us. And again, uh, can't say enough about our, our pal Sam Bailey on staff, um, Sam owns this event. This, this is his, so we call it an NLEA economic symposium, but it's a Sam's event. And I really thank you for all the work you put into it. I mean, your planning, your organization, not every detail shows, and uh, it's very much appreciated. Well done. Um, if you'll allow, and, and I suppose you will because I have a microphone, there's not a lot you can do about it. Um, but before we move into our award showcase for the NLEA today, I'd like to take a moment to recognize some recently retired board members. And I want to uh, qualify right up front. We didn't make arrangements to have them here today because, well, they're retired. They don't need to be at an NLEA event anymore. They've done enough of that. But I didn't want the event to go by without recognizing them and their service to the NLEA. So one of those is a founding board member 40 years ago, Don Boyson. I don't know any of you will remember Don. Um, I worked in the insurance industry, represented Charlevoix County on the board, and just brought a ton of institutional knowledge to our organization that is very difficult to replace, we're already seeing. Uh, although he is a phone call away, he has said that. So Don has very strong business acumen and brought to the organization um, uh, a passion for keeping us on task and on mission. So we really will miss Don and appreciate his service for that. Another board member who left us this year on the board is Gary Walker of EJ. Um, he was on our board as a representative of the Northwest Michigan Industrial Association. He's a former SBDC counselor. He, many people may not know that in his past. So he brought, also brought a strong business focus to our conversations and really was a wonderful liaison between the NLEA and the manufacturing community. So Paul Blome was on our board as well, came to us from Sheboygan County through his work at TubeFat, and most recently was serving as treasurer of the NLEA. And I love this guy's style. Paul's style was excellent. He, hey, he had a really strong, solid understanding of finances. He was a perfect treasurer. But he had this don't panic voice of reason about how he managed that whole process. And it was really refreshing to work with him. He kept our organization on a steady path through good times and bad, and I would describe Paul as that consummate board member who's a really valuable contributor. And then lastly, uh, Bill Scott has retired from the board and, uh, and also retired from his career. He was most recently the president and CEO of Great Lakes Energy. And uh, uh, even after he retired from Great Lakes Energy, he would dust off his sport jacket and tie and show up at our meetings for a few months uh, to keep us on track. He is a past chair of the board, he is a past treasurer for our board, and on a personal note, Bill was a mentor of mine for many years. He, he once served on the Petoskey Chamber when I worked there, and he tutored me <laughs> on the intricacies of nonprofit finance, and he knew it through and through. And he really helped grow that organization and grow me as a professional, then he brought all that to the NLEA, and uh, he's a brilliant man and, and certainly missed already. So, so I salute Don Poison, Jerry Walker, Paul Blum, and Bill Scott, and I hope to please join me in thanking them for their countless contributions to the NLEA. 
So before I give up my podium time, I'd like to make up another couple of quick acknowledgements. First of all, honor for me to have my old pal Andy Hayes at our table today as a guest at our Consumers Energy Table. Andy's a former president of the NLEA. Many of you in the room remember him in that role, and he was the one responsible for the fireworks and the marching bands and everything else that, that happened there. Uh, and, uh, so it's an honor to have him back, especially on our 40th anniversary. Um, Andy, for those who don't know, is moving out of the area. So I'm heartbroken about that. He and his wife, Cindy, are moving to Allendale to be closer to their children and grandchildren. And uh, I'm going to miss the heck out of him, I know. But uh, he's also been a personal mentor for me and really helped launch my career a long time ago. So thank you, Andy. Great to have you back. He's not here today, but I also want to acknowledge David Emmel, our immediate uh, past president of the NLEA. Uh, last year at this time, David was already charting and mapping out his retirement, and a few of us knew it, but he didn't want to be public about that at this event. So he did retire from the NLEA last year, again, mostly family connections and uh, things that he needed to take care of, and uh, uh, also very much missed by all of us at the NLEA. Great leader, and, uh, and uh, uh, if you follow him on Facebook, seems to be enjoying a nice retirement, so good for David. So lastly, I get to introduce our organization's greatest accomplishment of this past year. After an extensive search process, and uh, there's going to be some head nods of some people in the room who are on that search committee, an extensive search process, we were able to land Peyton Hines as our new president. She comes to us with a tremendous background in nonprofit economic development work, and most recently working with the Office of Rural Prosperity in the state of Michigan. Her personal goal was uh, to lead an economic development organization, and our goal was to find a good leader. So I love it when a plan comes together, right? That all works so nicely. We're delighted to have Peyton on the NLEA team. I just uh, know her diligence, thoroughness, knowledge, connections, experience, and expertise will carry this organization forward into its next 20 years. So please welcome back to the podium our new president, Peyton Hines. Okay, so before we officially move into the Showcase Awards, we have one more item to address, and I will try to keep it brief, because I know we're running a little long here. But I'd like to again thank all of our other NLEA Board of Directors, um, Board Members, past and present. Thank you for all that you do. Um, and there's one Board Member in particular who we wanted to recognize and thank today. Um, it's not typical for us to award a, a board member who is still actively serving on the board, but this is a very special case. This board member has come above and beyond to support the organization and demonstrate his genuine care for all of us as staff. Um, and I really can't go much further without him figuring out that it's him. But this board member stayed on as board chair for an additional year just to ensure a smooth leadership transition for our organization. And he's put in an incredible amount of time and energy into his role. And I'm just so appreciative personally for all of his support as I've moved into this role. So on behalf of Emily, staff and board of directors, we'd like to recognize Carlin Smith for his unwavering commitment to the organization. Each year, we like to take a moment to celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of our collective efforts towards economic and community development. So today, in sticking with tradition, we will recognize select individuals, businesses, and groups from across our region. The presenter of our first award will be Brad Keen, Chief Operating Officer from Boyne Resorts, to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. So please join me in welcoming Brad to stage. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. And we are honored to have you all here today for this special part of the symposium. Each year, NLEA recognizes an individual who has had a substantial impact on their community through their professional and personal life. The person being recognized this year is someone I know both 
professionally and personally. And I can attest to the lifetime of contributions this person has made to the region and far beyond. He grew up in Point City and in 1974 launched his career that now spans 50 years. From his early days as a dishwasher to later leading one of the area's most economical, impactful operations, his imprint is often accompanied by humor and has been nothing short of transformative. He bartended at Thunder Mountain in 1976 and 77. That's a while ago. <laughs> Then worked in snowmaking and hotel maintenance at Wayne Mountain, and then from 1979 or from 1979 to 83, in the late 80s, took on construction projects at the Highlands, built condominiums, the Country Club of Wayne, and then led the teams to install two chairlifts, and then put the addition on the day lunch. In the early 90s, he oversaw the installation of the Victor and the Mountain Express lift here at Wayne Mountain and his meticulous attention to detail earned him Boyne Mountain's facilities manager in 1993. He shifted to resort operations when promoted to area manager in 1995, and then in 2004, he took the helm officially as general manager. On his watch, numerous major projects have been completed. Exciting ones like the Mountain Grand Lodge and Spa, Avalanche Bay, the Disciples Bridge developments, and his latest, Sky Bridge, Michigan. And a lesson flashy, like large solar array across the street, or connecting uh, the resort to Boyne City's water, wastewater infrastructure. He navigated Boyne Mountain from a position of questionable economic stability and led the turnaround of the resort to become one of the most successful four season resorts in the Midwest. His professional success, beyond professional success, this individual has positively impacted the communities surrounding Boy Mountain. His commitment to the Thursday afternoon ski program for Boy Fall students, along with support of local youth and sports, has been, has been and remains unwavering. He established the Boy Mountain Fund for Youth with Charlotte Boy County, with the Charlotte Boy County Community Foundation. And in 2022 alone, contributed over $100,000 in the resort sales of chairs from the Disciples 1 and 2 lists. This man's career is a testament to what can be achieved with passion, perseverance, and genuine love for what you do. His impact on Boyne Mountain Resort and across our company and on the Boyne Valley and surrounding communities will indeed resonate for generations. Please join me in congratulating my friend and mentor, Ed Grice. I'm the senior vice president 
for small business at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Uh, it's, it's fitting and, and we're so honored here on behalf of the MEDC to present this award uh, for the project of the year. Um, so buckle up because there's a lot of great, uh, great achievements to talk through here. Uh, and it's really fitting as well for the MEDC to present this award as part of our um, broader economic development strategy and importance of people projects places to promote economic prosperity in both peninsulas of our great state. So thanks again for having us here today. So this award recognizes entities who have undertaken a project that will have a substantive effect on economic and community vitality in the area. When businesses invest in the region, that investment ripples out into the community through construction wages, new hires, tax revenue to support services, better work environments, and so much more, as this group well knows. In 2023, this company completed multiple projects to expand and update their business. With the support of the MLEA, they secured a tax abatement to support a $4 million, 26,000 square foot expansion, and in 10 employees, their current 145 count. So this uh, capital investment will not only support their own growth, but also adds tremendous tax value to the community. And their investment did not stop at building. In 2023, this company secured grants totaling almost $400,000 to support their investment in their technology and production lines. One award was for $90,000 through the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. Thank you, Bill Barrett. Uh, their Food Agriculture Investment Program to support the purchase of a new state-of-the-art plywood press inspection repair line and hand line. The innovative spirit is strong with this business, as I think you all have heard bits and pieces of this throughout the day. Uh, and this new plywood system will only strengthen and align for continued growth, innovation, and um, benefits of the community. They were also awarded a $300,000 grant from the U.S. Forest Service to upgrade the boiler system to, run the, the, to burn the wooden leftovers for energy. From mistakenly purchasing a veneer lake machine instead of a basket maker in the 1940s, this company has evolved into a staple of this community and a national leader in their industry. Their investments demonstrate a continued commitment to a community where this family-owned business has been for over 75 years. That's where some of the applause. Is. Please join me in congratulating the Montai Wood Products team on their impressive accomplishments and welcoming them on stage to receive this year's Project of the Year Award. Manufacturing is a team sport, so I want to thank our team over there. You see them, they're great. Come on up, guys. You should be here. It's a team sport. The typical engineers, they're not, they, don't, they don't seem to be in front of the, in front of the stage. But uh, these guys are awesome to work with. Great, great brothers. So appreciate these guys. Appreciate the NLEA and the key part of the team. So. Energy demand just keeps growing. 
Um, you know, we don't make the power. We, we move it over long distances. Our partners, you know, Consumers Energy, DTE, Great Lakes, they generate that power. We're kind of the energy superhighway where we move it along and then it comes to your homes and businesses. Uh, but today, my uh, pleasure is to, or, uh, to announce the Got Secrets Award. Uh, the person or organization that earns this award is never surprising, as they are a major part of their community. They are always supporting others with time, sponsorships, and guidance. They are held in high regard, and those surrounding them are filled with gratitude and shared enthusiasm. Furthermore, the award recognizes those who go above and beyond in support of their communities. This year, we award this honor not to a single individual or entity, but to a community. One that demonstrated resilience and unwavering commitment in the face of immense challenges in 2023. They worked tirelessly to overcome a constantly changing situation while ensuring the health, safety, and security of their neighbors and businesses. When a local manufacturing facility caught fire, Fire departments across the county rushed to the site and stayed until the fire was put out, but that was just the beginning. The city's police and fire departments, as well as surrounding townships, assisted with the blaze. The facility and surrounding streets were shut down to address the unsafe structure and potential contaminants. The county's emergency response manager coordinated efforts between local, state, and federal agencies to ensure the safety of the city. Community members rallied to support local businesses that lost visitor traffic due to road closures. In the face of adversity, the community really pulled together. So please join me in congratulating the greater Sheboygan community on receiving this year's Guts and Grits Award. Sheboygan City Manager, please join me on stage to accept this award on behalf of your community. And all who are involved in the response to the fire and supporting local businesses, please join Dan on the stage for a group photo. The Sheboygan community is truly deserving of this Gus Sanders Award. Great event. 
And it, it shows that Sheboygan, whether it's a county or a city, we stick together and we were able to take care of that. And hopefully soon we'll be announcing some sort of rebuilding of that site or reopening that because it, it is, you know, tough for our county. So thank you. Thank you. 